Jingilang Kikin Hun Menteri Kesorkar Miglaya Democratic Alliance Hak Katwai Teri Ukola Lingkot Arja Arpulai Kal Menjur Ban Pentri Kam Yaka Tourism Policy Arja Arpulai Kal Miglaya State Organic and Farming Policy Arja Arpulai Bari Kal Drug Reduction Elimination and Action Mission Haba Kranji Kilat Patai Kubor U Menteri Rangba Kan Jela U Konrad Ki Sang Ma Ulo Ang Baka Tourism Policy Kan Taulat Taulanti Ban Shemi Ki Sien Jam Ban Ban Klang Yaka Nika Tanat Bat Ban Kenti Uru Yaka Yok Kakot Ki Nong Shong Shnong Kan Jela Kat Baka Organic Farming Policy Kan Pen Shlori Ka Kamrap Klam Dawai Sbo Halor Ka Drug Policy U Menteri Rangba Ulo Ang Baka Jengi Khun Kan Long Ban Pen Lat Yaka Jela Nau Tew Jat Jeng Di Pen Bu Ai Policy 2023. Uh, as you are aware, the last tourism policy was uh, made in 2011, and since then, uh, since then, the tourism uh, industry and the sector has changed a lot, and hence uh, we felt the need to improve it and adapt it to the current situation. Uh, this is a, a very very detailed uh, pro uh, tourism policy where a lot of consultation has been done by uh, the department, and we have come out with this. And uh, we have also placed this in public domain already. So I'm sure most of you have seen it and have gone through it. Uh, the second very important, which is the dream mission, uh, which is again um, a goal and uh, a target by the government to ensure that uh, this particular aspect of substance abuse is taken up in a much more structured manner and uh, in a mission mode manner. And hence, uh, this will be uh, worked by uh, you know, taking all different departments into confidence and uh, different aspects of, uh, of rehabilitation centers, of giving counseling, uh, along with uh, working with the police department on how to ensure that the inflow is contained and uh, all other aspects that are uh, to do with substance abuse have been worked out in detail in this mission mode uh, program. And the objective, of course, is to make uh, Megalad drug free. That you've created. Uh, the idea is really to um, give a proper shape and structure to the overall tourism sector, keeping in mind the current situation that is there in the uh, in the overall sector. Now, what we see is that uh, um, you know things are happening in tourism. A lot of things are happening, but then uh, you know this not happening in a systematic and structured uh, manner and. Uh, the policy is basically meant to give a complete shape uh, to the entire process in which uh, we want the tourism sector to grow and uh, also how the different departments will work together to ensure that at the end we are able to really <coughs> synergize between the different departments and get the maximum output when it comes to uh, the tourism sector in terms of livelihood and in terms of uh, sustainability and all the other aspects that I have mentioned. So all these aspects are there. For example, we we also don't have certifications. We don't have standards. So for example, a particular say a homestay, you know, if it's certified by say the government of Meghalaya or by the tourism sector, uh, the tourism um, directorate, uh, it will ensure that it builds up the confidence among the the tourists also to to stay in those locations. So these kind of aspects of branding, certification, and regulations. These are all areas, uh, and the areas I mentioned before also. Uh, these are these are the things that will be covered in this tourism uh, in, in policy. And as I said, the idea is to really give it a proper shape and ensure that uh, we structure the entire uh, sector in the process in which we move forward. Increase the overall, uh, you know, the the um, contribution of the tourism sector into the GDP. Uh, it is, of course, uh, I don't have the exact numbers right now with me, but it is below 10% uh, in terms of the contribution to, this, uh, to, the, to the entire GDP, uh, state GSDP. Uh, so therefore, we are looking at uh, more contributions. So obviously, if you look at the uh, points that I have mentioned to you, so when we'll have more uh, uh, rooms coming up, when we'll have more uh, uh, overall uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the guides coming up, or taxis coming up. So obviously all of this and flow of tourists coming in, different uh, activities happening, all this will lead to the contribution and the revenue of the uh, of the public as well as the government going up. And we obviously expect to see uh, having a huge impact on the overall uh, GSDP of the state. So numbers, of course, we don't have numbers because these are things which are not simple to calculate. It's very complicated. 
uh, but definitely the whole idea of having the structure and this policy is to ensure that uh, the contribution of the sector is uh, much more than what it is today. Tourism sector cannot be run by the government and uh, you know the idea of uh, us bringing this policy is to ensure that we are able to create livelihood and uh, in order to create the livelihood without the people in the private sector being involved it won't happen. So definitely uh, government uh, we have maintained should not be in the business of running uh, different uh, programs. We should be providing and we should be uh, only uh, uh, facilitating the entire process and the rest of the thing should be run by the private sector. So basically it's uh, one has to understand that uh, we have to balance things out. Uh, it's not as simple as saying that uh, you know today we are uh, uh, using fertilizers and uh, tomorrow we just stop it and we're going to shift to organic uh, organic uh, farming in one go. Uh, everything has to be in a transition format. And therefore, uh, the livelihood of people and uh, especially in the vegetable growing section, uh, we have seen that uh, you know uh, chemical fertilizers are still being used and uh, it is required in some areas and it is taking time for the organic fertilizers uh, to really have that kind of impact. So yes, if you are saying that it's going to be black and white and we're going to some completely shift to organic tomorrow, that's not going to happen. It takes time. It's a process. We need to continue to ensure that the people are taken on board. We need to ensure that people are uh, given the options and given the alternative to move forward. And that's what this organic mission is, uh, you know, uh, not organic mission, but the policy, I'm sorry. The policy is what it intends to do, is to shift towards this and slowly and steadily we will see that most of the, number one, the areas which are not using chemical fertilizers that much. At least they will be then getting incentives or structures or systems to move into organic farming and get the support that they want to do. Then of course there are areas which are using them. Then we will work towards how we will see that we will slowly shift them from say chemical fertilizers to say organic fertilizers. But as I said, uh, for us to do that, we also have to keep in mind that uh, there are people who depend on this uh, chemical fertilizers. There are uh, vegetables that uh, <coughs> need this and uh, hence uh, for us to completely cut it off and say we will not do it from tomorrow uh, would not be just and would uh, require us to really consider the livelihood of the people. And that's why it will, it's a process, but we are moving towards that. Yeah, that's a different aspect, but yes, definitely we can look into that also. You're right. Yeah. All those aspects will be looked into. And in fact, we are uh, working on, uh, because we realize that one of the challenges also is that uh, the outlets are not there. You see, And so we are working in this uh, program also has got, policy also has got the aspect of outlets uh, being set up in important consumption centers so that people can actually go to the shops and centers and buy uh, the organic food. Because a lot of people want it, but they don't know where to go. So that's also a part of this policy. So but the government. Uh, third, of course, is the uh, Meghalaya Advertisement Policy 2023 and uh, as you are all aware, because of the absence of this policy, uh, there was a lot of um, ambiguity when it came to aspects of advertisement, uh, especially for the press and media fraternity, and uh, which caused a lot of delay in the payments and therefore this uh, policy has come up after deep consultation with uh, all the stakeholders and it was passed today in the cabinet. So the advertisement policy is um, something um, as the IPR department we felt it has been very long overdue. Um, owing to the fact that um, uh, there has been um, uh, a lot of um, ambiguity on the, the system uh, which needs to be followed for, um, for um, advertisements and also for the payment of the advertising bills. So therefore uh, we felt um, it the need of the hour to come up with streamlining the entire system through an advertising policy. Also uh, we have kept in mind the fact that today um, uh, advertising and the medium of ad, uh, advertising is also a very very um, uh, uh, you know, different environment from what it used to be say 10 years back. Uh, so looking at all those aspects, the, the kind of uh, technology that has, that has come in, uh, the fact that um, social, uh, digital media, online media is playing such an important role also. Um, so all these things have been factored in uh, and uh, the, the IPR department has come up with a, uh, an advertisement policy.
to streamline this and to also factor in um, the changes in the advertisement sector. Uh, and we brought it to the cabinet today. It was discussed and it has been cleared by the cabinet. The key features is that the Directorate of Information and Public Relations will uh, henceforth be the nodal agency for the issuance of government advertisements and uh, other agencies uh, to impanel um, the print and media houses, uh, print electronic media houses. Um, we have also under this policy classified um, the, um, uh, the various segments of uh, media that is available, that is print, electronic media, online media, uh, in terms of online news portals. Um, then we have also set the terms and conditions for impanelment, uh, uh, which are also included for <coughs> print, electronic media, online news portals. Uh, applications for impanelment with the government are to be submitted uh, by the publishers or producers uh, concerned in a prescribed form, which will be spelled out in the policy. Um, this um, the advertisement policy is also, um, you know, spelling out um, uh, the constitution of a state level impanelment impanelment committee, consisting of members from various departments. Uh, which will <coughs> also include representatives from AIR, that's All India Radio, from DDK, <coughs> representatives from the districts, that is the Deputy Commissioners, uh, the DIPR, and also the PIB. The terms of uh, reference for the Impanelment Committee, um, which is also being spelled out in this advertisement policy, would be to examine, scrutinize, and then accord approval for applications referred by the DIPR. Uh, then um, <coughs> we have also spelled out the uh, conditions uh, for eligibility for print, electronic and uh, on digital media. Um, we have also spelled out the classification and specifications of advertisements uh, because um, you know uh, advertisements have uh, specifics these days in terms of the banner sizes, in terms of uh, many, many, uh, you know, uh, the ways that um, you know, uh, advertisements are given out, the various categories. Uh, we have also um, laid out general guidelines for release of advertisement and we want to, f uh, the advertisement policy focuses on equitable distribution of advertisements. Um, we've also <coughs> spelled out in this uh, policy that there will be an advertisement committee which will consist of officials of the finance, law, um, of course the Directorate of uh, Advertising and Visual Publicity, Government of India, that is DAVP, and also the President or the Secretary of MEPA as representatives, apart from the DIPR officials. 